Oh my gosh. It's Brian Tracy. How you doing, brother? I'm doing fine, Andy. How are you? I'm doing fantastic. Can y'all tweak him up a little bit on the volume? This is my friends, Brian. Well, I just, when I listen to this, I want to get on a plane and come down there myself and sign up. Well, we wish you could have made it, but we understand with all the COVID and all kinds of other stuff going on, but your health is good. You're in good health now. You told me you're 77 years old and you would outwork most of these people under the table at 77. I think that's what it <laughs> Well, I never said that, but it's probably true. Uh, the, you know, I was just talking with somebody a few minutes ago and we're talking about the reason for success and failure and successful people love to work. That's it. Go home now. That's it. That's all you need to know is successful people love to work. Now, then what you have to do is the people in this room, we say, are successes looking for a place to happen? They're successful people just looking for a place to happen. And uh, what uh, you're offering them is a place to happen. And then what you do is you just work and you just work your you know what off. And there's nothing that can stop you. You know, we, we we're really fortunate. We read all this nonsense about um uh, america's not a good country and so on some years ago a friend of mine was bill bennett and he was the secretary of education in the reagan administration and he was giving a speech to a group of 12 year olds or, or 12th graders and they were asking uh, mr bennett we hear all these negative things about america how can you tell what's a good country and what's a bad country and bill bennett's a really neat guy very smart and he said, well, it's very simple. He said, you uh, just use the gate test. And well, what is the gate test? He said, well, you just open the gates and see which way the people go. And uh, in America, when you open the gates, where do, which way do the people go? Well, if you've been watching television this last week, looking at the people trying to get in from Mexico by the tens of thousands, tens of thousands, 50,000, hundreds of thousands, roaring in to try to get in to the U.S. because if they can get here, all they have to do is get here and they've got a chance. They've got a, a shot at success. And everybody in the audience there is way, way ahead of people who are trying to get here for the first time. And so that's the critical thing. There's no limit to what you can accomplish. And I'm going to give you some keys to unlocking those doors, but there's no limit to what you can accomplish except for the limits that you put on yourself with your own thinking. And uh, the people you have up on the stage there, their stories demonstrate that there's no limits here. If you are not succeeding, that's your problem. It's not the, it's not the business. It's not the market. It's just the fact that you haven't learned how yet. Guys, Brian Tracy has helped literally millions of people make millions of dollars and all of his books are my favorite but goals is my number one favorite book of brian tracy's i've ever read and that's where we got this coin of success it's described in that book and we've had brian tracy in to speak before and he just blew us away it was amazing and i asked missy to contact brian i said i want to send him my coins and just tell him how much i love him and confess to stealing his idea about the success coin. And so we shipped them to him in our books and we started a relationship up again. We started talking on Zoom calls and then we, uh, we figured out a way to get Brian to agree to talk to you guys about how to become multimillionaires on your own terms, but through the Alliance system. And we have, we've had a blast talking to you. I've seen so much enjoyed my one-on-one -on -one conversations here. You're talking about your children and grandchildren and, um, and talking about us doing a Brian Tracy success coin too. Yes, absolutely. But you know, the, the, the Wayne Dyer was a good friend of mine before he died. And he wrote a book called No Limit Thinking. And I just think that's the great title for a book. It's a great title for a life, just no limit thinking. The only thing that really holds us back are the limits we place on our own thinking. So if we just throw off the limits, there aren't any. And if there aren't any, then what do you do? Well, the only other alternative is to become a big success.
and to become wealthy and have a big house on a hill and make sure your kids go to great schools so that they also have the keys to the kingdom. They have the coins, if you like, that enable them to be a big success. One of the things that I have four children all growing up now, and they have children, I have eight grandchildren. And the one thing that my wife and I, Barbara, focused on was to uh, help our kids to learn these things that you're learning from the Alliance and uh, to become successful faster in this lifetime and help your kids to be successful. Give them the tools. And if you'll get off the stage and give me a chance to talk, Andy, I want to share some principles, which I wrote after our last talk, I wrote down the 10 commandments of success. And it's interesting because the entirety of uh, the Christian religion, which has influenced the whole world is based on the 10 commandments. So I've produced my own 10 commandments and you can take them and you can use them. And uh, I will give you a guarantee. They're absolutely 100% guaranteed to work. Any one of them alone will make you rich. All 10 of them together will make you so successful and happy at the same time. It's no, it's, it's no good, as you, as you know, you and I have talked a lot. It's no good just to be wealthy. A lot of people are unhappy. It's to be a wealthy and to be happy. And they have great family and great relationships and live a long time. In, in, in the U.S. today, you can live to about 79 to 80 years on average. And your job is to break the average. <laughs> and... Uh, not only to have a great life, but to have a long, great life. So these 10 commandments, do you yes. have them written down? Do you repeat them to them? Do your kids have them memorized? Well, I, um, I've just written, written them down and shared them with as many people as possible. And if you like, I'll give you the 10 commandments. Would you like to do that? I mean, how do you want to, to, to take the next hour together. Andy. I love it. I love it. Okay. Well, let's just go through them. And if you have any questions, uh, a commandment, by the way, is something that's everywhere and always true. It's everywhere and always true. It's not true occasionally. It's like gravity. Gravity doesn't work occasionally. <laughs> gravity works all the time, every time <laughs> for everyone who uses it. So commandment number one is to decide exactly what you want and write it down and work on it every day. Now that sounds very simple, but the great truths are simple. The great truths are simple. They're not complicated the, because God only made simple folk. And so therefore any commandments that are relevant to us are simple as well. And number one is decide exactly what you want, write it down and work on it every day. Now I say this, but do you know that only 3% of adults have written goals and everybody else works for them? Everybody works for the people who have written goals. And you say, well, I know what my goals are. Great, show me them in writing. Because it's only when you write them down that you develop clarity. My favorite word in success is clarity, clarity. And you cannot be clear unless you write it down on a piece of paper in such a way that you can show it and explain it to other people. Now, it's very, very common. Imagine that you decided to uh, buy a piece of land and build a dream house. And you worked and worked and worked and finally you could afford the house and you wanted to build the dream house. And you called the best contractor, the best construction person in the city and you bring him and say, here's my piece of land. I want you to build my dream house on this piece of land. Well, what would be the first question that the construction person would ask you? Where's your plan? Show me your blueprint. I mean, what, what do you want? Oh, you say, oh, don't worry. I've got it up here in my head. I know exactly, I'll, I'll know what it is when I see it. And that's the great majority. More than 90% of people think that well, they'll know what their ideal life looks like when they see it. But no, that's not how it works. <laughs> you have to write it down and you have to make uh, a plan and you have to go over the plan over and over again. So number one, decide what you want, write it down, and then work on it every day. If you're going to be successful, remember the 80-20 rule, 
80% of people are not successful. So if you want to be in the top 20%, well, then you have to write things down and you have to work on them all the time. And you'll find at the beginning, by the way, it's very hard. It's very hard. If anybody ever tells you that it's not easy to be successful, then you run for the door. You grab your wallet and run for the door because it's not easy. There's only three types of difficulty in becoming successful. There's hard, harder still, and still harder more. It's just really hard to do. So that's the first one. If you're not writing down your goals, what I do, and, I, and I've taught many people to become millionaires, I'll give you a very simple secret to become a millionaire. I'll, I'll just show it to you. I hadn't thought about it, but it's right next to me here. This is my, this is a, a workbook. This is a, 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 a three hole binder with a spiral notebook. And what I do is I found more than 30 years ago, if you get a binder like this, which will cost you, I say, I say it'll cost you about $1.95. And if you can't afford it, your mother will get it for you because she wants you out of the house anyway. And if you get this and then you write down your 10 goals every day, you open up your workbook and you write down your 10 goals as though they were already a reality. I have a net worth of more than $1 million. I weigh X number of pounds. I do this, I achieve this. The sub, your subconscious mind only understands a goal if it's in writing. And so write it down, write it down, write it down. And it's the most astonishing thing. So I have business owners, uh, very successful people uh, that I put through my program and in the middle of the first morning, I'll say, now, I want to introduce you to your new best friend. Your new best friend is a spiral notebook. And what you're going to do is every morning you're going to get up and you're going to write down your 10 top goals without looking at the previous page. So in other words, you're not just going to copy from one page to the other. You're going to turn up a clean page and write down your 10 goals. And the most amazing thing will happen is you'll develop greater and greater clarity your goals description will change from day to day. Uh, the order of priority will change. The description will change. It's the most amazing thing. And as you begin to rewrite your goals every day, it's almost like stepping on the accelerator of your life. You start to go faster and faster towards your goals and then pop, pop, your goals start to come true. And it's amazing. I've had people say they've been through years of coaching and spent tens of thousands of dollars. And this one exercise over 30 days changed their life forever. So will you do it? Well, here's a test. You know, if you go to a university or school, they give you a test to see if you have learned the material. And the test is simply this, is can you write down your 10 most important goals every single day for a month? If you can do that, your life will change forever. And you know something? Only 3% of adults can do it. The other 97%, according to, this, to the research, can't do it. They don't have the character. They don't have the strength. They don't have the will, willpower to do it. They just can't do it. So therefore, uh, Andy and I are giving you this very simple gift. It costs $1.95. And if you don't have one, you can borrow one and just write down your 10 most important goals every day and see if you can do it. And uh, it's quite amazing uh, what will happen to you when you do it. Now, the second commandment is this, is dedicate yourself to lifelong learning. I saw the young man on the stage here a couple of minutes ago who just reads 100 pages a day, 500 pages a week. I mean, it's interesting. Uh, Warren Buffett is one of the richest men in the world. He's worth almost $100 billion. And they asked him, what is his secret for success? He started with nothing when he was a young man. He's now 80 years old. He said, it's simple. He said, I read five hours a day. I read five hours a day. Now, I, I read three hours a day, but to read five hours a day, he said, yeah, that's the secret to success. He said, well, where do you get the time to read five hours a day? He said, well, success secret number two is I say no to everything it does not move me toward my most important goals. I just say no. There's two or three things, and this is true, by the way, in life, there's only two or three things that are more important than everything else. Two or three goals that are worth 90% of everything that you do. 
He said, so I only do those two or three things. I don't do anything else. People say, do you want to play golf or do you want to uh, go fishing or, or something like this? He says, no, 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 no. It's I only do those two or three things that help me to be successful more than anything else. And one of them, of course, it takes approximately five minutes for you to write down your goals every morning. It takes about five minutes. And that one exercise alone programs you. And it programs your subconscious and your superconscious mind. And once your superconscious mind has the program, it works 24 hours a day to bring that goal toward you and bring you toward the goal. So there's one of the richest men in the history of the world. He says the key to success is read every day and just say no. <laughs> you know, sometimes when I'm doing a seminar, I say, okay, you all go home now. <laughs> That's probably enough for you. It's uh, will change your life forever if you have the discipline to do it. Uh, so that's good. Now, number three, oh, by the way, with regard to reading that's, and, and learning, this is so, so important. I, I, I cannot tell you, uh, but when you meet successful people, one of the subjects, and I have uh, friends who are very successful, very successful. One of the things I ask is, what are you reading right now? What are you reading right now? Uh, what's the most important thing you've learned recently? Uh, what would you recommend that I read? Is there always sharing back and forth ideas on books to read? Um, ideally, read my books, because what I've done, and, and, and Andy knows this, is I've read uh, all their books. And what I do is I take the very, very best, and then I condense it into new books. And um, uh, I'll even read Andy's books. We know this. See, see, here's House Values and Behaviors by Andy Albright. Here's Millionaire by Andy Albright. Here's the Eight Steps to Success by Andy Albright. Here's Inside the Circle by Andy Albright. Well, these books will make you rich. I mean, it, it costs you a couple of dollars and they make you rich. If so, if you don't want to be rich, buy these books and read them and practice them every day. No big deal. And also listen to audio programs because an audio program is a condensation of 10 or 20 or 50 books. So therefore, listen to audio programs as you move around. Never, 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 never listen to music on the radio when you're moving around. I cannot tell you how many people over the last few decades have told me that listening to one program over and over made them rich. They just, just listened to it and listened to it and listened to it and, and it soaked in a little bit and it soaked in a little bit more and got deeper and, and deeper and they, they became wealthy. They just did what was on the program. So it's really important. And then the third way, and this is what I call this is the golden triangle of continuous learning. Read, listen, and attend conferences like this. Sometimes, and, 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 and when you're in a conference like this, um, ask people, what's the best thing you've learned in the last year? What's the best book you've read? What's the best audio program you've listened to? And whatever they tell you, you should be walking around with a notebook. You should be walking around with something and write it down, write it down, write it down. Don't think that you're so smart. I, many years ago, worked for a man, I call him the big boss. And as a result of several things, he hired me to be his personal assistant. I didn't realize until later, this man was worth almost a billion dollars. He owned 200 companies and he was one of the most respected, smartest people I ever met. And the first thing I noticed when I met with him I would meet with him two or three times a week, is that whenever we talked, he would write it down, write it down. He always sat, had a pen in his hand and he wrote things down. And I learned later that if he wrote something down, he could quote it back to me six months later, word for word. He could read a contract or a book and quote it back to me six months or a year later. He had what is called a photographic memory. He only had to see it or hear it once and he had it forever. And yet he, wrote it down, wrote it down. So if a billionaire who starts with nothing, who becomes one of the richest people in the country, and one of the most respected people writes everything down, you write everything down too. <laughs> Good grief. Just do what Andy tells you to do and, uh, and you'll be fine. Now, number three is become excellent at what you do. Become excellent at what you do. There's no mediocre people who are successful. Only people who are excellent. They do their job really well. And when people talk about them, 
they say, oh yeah, he's really good or she's really good at what they do. And your job in life is to move up into the top 20%. Now it's interesting, the top 20% of people, you heard the 80-20 rule, the top 20% of people earn 80% of the money in every field, the top, uh, bottom 80% uh, earn 20%. Well, if you sit down with a piece of paper and calculate it, what does it work out to? Well, it means that the average person in the top 20% earns 16 times the average of the bottom 80%, 16 times. Now here's a fun question, Andy, is for our friends here, what difference would it make if you were earning today 16 times what you're earning right now? What difference would it make in your life if you're earning 16 times? Well, the top 20% earn on average 16 times. So how do you get into the top 20%? You make a decision and you simply say, I'm going to get into the top 20%. I'm going to do whatever it takes and spend whatever amount of time, but I'm going to get into the top 20%. And the interesting thing is once you make that decision, as long as you keep working on it every day, nobody can stop you. It's not as if there's, you know, they got the Gestapo waiting at the doors to stop you from becoming wealthy. No, everybody wants you to be wealthy because everybody who is working with you to help you to be wealthy benefits. So therefore the very fastest way that most people become rich is by helping other people to become rich. So remember the people in the top 20% earn an average of 16 times. So your job is to earn an average in the top 20% in the top 10%, then the top 5% and so on. And again, nobody can stop you except you, uh, if you stop, <laughs> that's if you stop. So just, just don't stop. So that's the, the third commandment, uh, become excellent at what you do. Make a decision that you're going to become the very best at what you do. The uh, commandment number four is to um, identify uh, the constraints that hold you back from achieving your goals. Now, this is based on some great research that was done some years ago at the University of um, Tel Aviv in Israel. And um, what the author found was that between you and anything you want to accomplish, there is what he called a constraints or a limiting factor. There's something that holds you back. And your job is to decide you, where you are today and then decide where your goal is, where you want to be in the future, and then identify your limiting factors. What are the constraints that determine how fast you achieve your goal? And this is really important. And this is now being taught in all the top universities in the world, the theory of constraints. And what they do is they teach people in businesses to go in and say, well, what is our goal? Well, let us say our goal is to double the size of our business in the next one year. Well, that's a big goal, heck of a goal. Say, so, all right, well, what determines the speed at which you achieve your goal? What do you need to do more of or less of? What do you need to start doing or stop doing? Uh, what do you, skills do you need to develop that you don't have? And what we do, when I've worked now in strategic planning for more than a thousand companies in 84 countries. And so one of the first questions we ask with these top executives, one of my clients has 152,000 staff in uh, more than a thousand different businesses. And so we work with the top people and we say, what is our goal? And our goal is always to uh, have more sales and, and bigger profits. All right, well, what sets the speed at which we grow. What sets the speed at which you double your income? Now, a seminar that I love to do that we've talked about before is doubling your income. So let us say your goal is to double your income. Well, what holds you back? And uh, my favorite question is, why aren't you already earning twice as much? Why aren't you already earning twice as much? What's your reason? What's your constraint? What's the limiting factor that holds you back? And you have to identify that and remember our favorite word, clarity. You have to be absolutely clear. Well, the reason why I am not earning twice as much today is 
this. Now, most people always decide that the reason they're not earning twice as much is something outside of themselves. It's something outside of themselves. It's their childhood. It's their upbringing. It's the market. It's the economy. It's a, a whatever. But superior people always look to themselves. And they always say, what is it in me that's holding me back? And the 80-20 rule applies to this theory of constraints, in my estimation, is that 80% of the reason why you're not achieving your goal or more is inside yourself. It's something that you are doing or not doing. So figure out what it is. Be honest. Don't pretend that you don't know or don't blame someone else for it. Just say, all right, the reason why I'm not earning twice as much is no, no, no. I don't start early enough. I don't work hard enough. I am not good enough in terms of skill. One of the most important things that Andy and I talk about is how important it is for you to be in the top five or 10% of your field. And why aren't you there already? Well, I guess I haven't worked at it long enough and hard enough. There you go. There you go. You've got the answer. Go home now. <laughs> Just upgrade your skills. So number four, commandment number four, I'm sorry, commandment number five is um, uh, unlock your inborn creativity. One of the things that I learned is that you are an inborn genius. You are a genius. Is Einstein said that every child is a genius. About five percent of children are born with genius capacities. That means you have the ability to perform at extraordinary levels. They have the ability to learn more than you could possibly dream of. Interesting thing is, the more you learn, the more you can learn because your brain is very much like a muscle. And so the more you use this muscle, the stronger it becomes, the more flexible it becomes, uh, the easier it becomes for you to learn and apply and to connect and interconnect the things that you have, have learned. So uh, it's, it's really important to unlock your inborn creativity and uh, realize that you have within you now all that you need to achieve any goal you can set for yourself. So what is it? And creativity is the key. Creativity is your ability to find faster, cheaper, better, easier ways to achieve a goal. So what are they? And remember your best friend is uh, a pad of paper and a pen. Write it down, write it down, write it down. One of the exercises that I will give you that will make you rich, actually this would be the worth the entire value of this entire conference. It's very simple. It's called the 20 idea method. And what you do is you take any obstacle you have and you write it down as a question. And uh, in, in your life you say, um, why uh, aren't I already worth $1 million? And you write that at the top of the page and then you write down 20 reasons why you're not already worth a million dollars. Or uh, you can write down is what can I do to achieve a net worth of a million dollars? And then you write down 20 answers. If you have any problem or difficulty at all, you write it down as a question at the top of the page and then generate 20 answers to your question. And you'll find that, and I've done this with many people, You'll find that your first answers, when you write down 20 answers, are very easy. Do more of this, do less of that, start doing this, stop doing that. But then you start to get to rough road and you have to really dig for answers. And then it becomes more and more difficult. And the last three or four answers to get to 20 are very, very hard, very painful. And sometimes the 20th answer changes your life forever. And what does it cost you? <laughs> Piece of paper and a pen and a little bit of character and determination. So this 20 idea method, I learned it many years ago and it just makes you rich. It makes you rich because what it does is the whole brain starts to work at a higher and higher level. You start to think better and you come up with better ideas and those ideas compound on top of other ideas and, and so on. And what it takes is a little bit of work, a little bit of discipline, a little bit of focus, and you just do it on a regular basis. So whenever you have any goal, write down, what are 20 things that I can do to achieve this goal? Whenever you have a problem, 
what are 20 things I can do to solve this problem? And you will be astonished at how smart you are. The answers that you start to come up with will be amazing. People will start saying, where did you, where did you think of that? How did you think of that? Well, it's very simple. I took a piece of paper and a pen and I began writing. It's just a most wonderful, wonderful thing. Well, number commandment uh, number um, uh, six is dedicate yourself to lifelong contribution. And this says basically, the more you put in, the more you get out. And you'll find that there's two types of people in life. And Andy and I were talking about this last week. There's people who are always saying, what's in it for me? Me, 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 like a little kid in the supermarket. Me, 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 me. And they're always asking, what's in it for me? What do I get? And uh, what we found, we were talking about the fact that the great law of the universe is the uh, golden is is the rule that says um, whatsoever you sow, so also shall you reap. Uh, that means whatever you put in, you get back. But what I have found, in, especially in spiritual development, is that you can only control one half of the equation, the sowing and reaping. You can control the sowing. If you have a farm and you want to have a great crop, what's the most important thing you do? Is you prepare the soil and sow the seeds and keep sowing the seeds. Now, you can't grow it. It's grown by the universe. The universe grows the crop, but you can plant the crop. So you'll find that back in the old days when the pioneers came out here, they'd find a good piece of land and they'd clear the land. And then they would sow the land. And then they would nurture the soil, take good care of it uh, every single day and allow the sun and the rain and um, the natural uh, powers in the, in the soil grow the crop. And then they would reap the crop. But you can only control half the equation. If you control half the equation, the universe will control the other half. If you plant lots of seeds, the universe will grow the seeds and give you a great crop. The universe will make you rich and make you happy. So it's very simple that you think in terms of contribution. Uh, in my life, I've always found that there's two things about contribution is that the more you contribute, of course, the more you get back, but contributing makes you happy. If you want to be happy, dedicate your life to serving, to giving to other people, to putting it in. And you don't have to worry. You don't have to worry where your rewards are going to come from. They come to you by law. They come to you by spiritual law. Whatsoever a man soweth, that also shall he reap. And you can only control one side of the equation. You can control the sowing side of the equation. So your job is to sow. Your job is to sow and to continue putting in. That means looking for ways to serve people. Here's a great story, uh, which you're all familiar with. But once upon a time, there was a salesman in New York and he was selling on the phone. He was selling uh, uh, investments and he decided he didn't like this sort of work. So he sat down with his wife and they said, let's, let's go out to the West Coast and start a business of some kind. So uh, they got in a car and they drove from one side of the country to the other. She drove and he sat there with a, a, a computer, a laptop, and he just he did some research and looked at different needs and, and things. And they came up with the idea that what uh, people needed is they needed to be able to get stuff uh, with as little effort as possible and as cheap as possible. So they rented a house and they had a garage and they began to buy books, popular books in quantity from the publishers. And you, anybody can buy things at wholesale in quantity. And he began to sell them online. And he said, now we have no business except this little business. What is the name of the biggest thing in the world? It's the Amazon River. So he called his company Amazon. And the rest is history. Today, he's worth more than $200 billion. He's the richest man in the history of the world. And what does he do? He looks for ways for products and services that people want. And then he sells them at prices below retail and delivers them in now within 24 hours. And so everybody's happy. 
and his focus in his company is customer service. What can we do to make our customers happy and then happier and then happier? And by the way, I've been thinking of my next book. I just finished my 91st book and uh, I'm thinking about book number 92, but I have to tell you, it's getting harder to come up with a new subject because I only want to write books that are popular, books that are life changing and business changing. So I've, so I've come up with a, um, uh, an idea for a book and I may write it or not, but I'm going to call it the ER factor, ER, the ER factor. And the ER factor is based on the fact that everybody in life wants to do things to improve themselves. That is the greatest drive of all of human nature to is just to improve themselves in some way, their, their life, their health, their finances, their family and so on. And so the ER factor is ER. So people want things that are fast ER and cheap ER and easy ER and more convenient or convenient ER and, and so on. Everybody wants an ER. So the way that you succeed in life is you plug in this ER factor to everything that you do. So you're always serving people faster, better, cheaper, easier, newer, uh, greater reliability, uh, more convenient. Everything is ER. And you and I may not write the book, but it's the thought that counts. So just think about how can I serve people better, faster, easier, cheaper? And all you need is one thing, deliver books to people who are going to buy them anyway, but don't have time to go down to the bookstore. So just deliver books faster <laughs> or serve people faster. Oh, what's the most successful coffee shop in the world? It's Starbucks. And sometimes today they have Starbucks on every, all four corners of an intersection. And all four stores are busy. And people go to Starbucks and one type of people goes to this Starbucks and another type of people goes to this Starbucks and the secretaries go here and the bosses go here. and Everybody's lined up at Starbucks first thing in the morning. It's the most amazing darn thing because they make it easier and cheaper and better and faster and more enjoyable to buy a cup of coffee. Well, within your mind, within your brain, there's probably more ideas than you could dream of in a lifetime. And every single one is is finding something where you can do an herb with your products and services and activities. When I started off with nothing, uh, I started off mowing lawns. We used to go around the neighborhood with a, a lawnmower. And I found ways to mow people's lawns better, faster, cheaper, easier than someone else. And I found later that I was using a push lawnmower. And then I bought a used, cheap lawnmower that was electric, or actually it was electric. And then I got a gasoline lawnmower. And then I realized I needed a much better lawnmower. So I wanted to make, to, to mow lawns so that they were like a golf green. You know, you think of a golf green, it's so beautifully cut. The, the grass is tight to, to, to the ground and so on. And so I had to get a professional lawnmower, which was very expensive, it was several hundred dollars. So I was at, went to a lawnmower store and I told them I needed a lawnmower and they had one that had been brought in for sale. And so they helped me to buy it and finance it. And I could take it out. And I went out around the neighborhood and asked people if I could mow their lawn. And um, they said, sure. And I said, well, I charge this amount. And it was a good amount. They said, that's a lot of money. I said, well, it's a very good lawn mowing job. You'll really like it. So I'd mow the lawn. And people in the neighborhood would come around and say, who in the hell cut your grass? Who cut your grass? That's beautiful. And somebody else would say, can you cut my grass? Well, within one summer, I was earning more than my father earned in his lifetime. It was the most amazing thing. And it was all based on her, just mowing the lawn faster, cheaper, easier, smoother, uh, and so on. And then people said, well, what about the, the, the edges? And so I got a hand edger and that didn't work very well. So I went back to my friends at the used uh, equipment store and they set me up with a electric with a gasoline uh, edger. So you could start it up and it had almost like a propeller on the one side and you sharpen it up 
and you could put an edge on the side of a yard that was as sharp as an arrow. So people would look at their yards and look like they'd been cut by geniuses. And because I had a really good gas lawnmower and a really good gas edger. And by the time I was 15, I was earning more money than any other kid at school. Why? It's because of the ear factor. <laughs> anyway, it's just a small thing. Is the opportunities are limited only by your own imagination. So um, think about contributing to other people. Uh, what do people like? People love it when you take good care of them, when you do something for them, when you make their lives better in some way. And just keep looking for it. And there's so many different things. People come here from every country in the world and they just find some place where there's an er, an er, somewhere they have no background, experience, money, knowledge, or everything else, but they can do something that people want done and they can do it faster, better, cheaper, easier. The only limitation is your own imagination. And since you're all geniuses, we all know this, in your business right now, you uh, have the ability, working with Andy and the others, to uh, help people dramatically improve the quality of their lives and a very, very small change uh, in their lives and what they're doing. So commandment number seven is um, accept complete responsibility for everything you are and everything you ever will be. When I began studying this subject, I found that there are no limits when you start to accept responsibility for yourself and for your life. And the key to accepting responsibility is no blaming. Make a decision today that you're never going to blame anybody else for everything, for anything in your life that you're not happy about. And this is the most amazing thing because 80% of people, bottom 80%, blame all the time. They're always thinking why somebody else is to blame. He said and she said and he did or he didn't and they did and so on. And so the turning point in life is for you to accept responsibility. The magic words, and Andy and I were talking about this last week, the magic words are, I am responsible. I am responsible. I am responsible. I learned those 40, 50 years ago and they just hit me like a truck. I couldn't believe how powerful they were. You see, Aristotle in 350 BC uh, came up with what he called the, the primum movum of human life. That means that the first moving factor, the greatest factor. And he said, it is to be happy. People want to be happy. Everything that you do in life is ultimately to be happy. So uh, why do you go to work uh, in the daytime? So you can earn money. Why do you want to earn money? So you can pay your bills. Why do you want to pay your bills? So you can be happy. So you can provide for your family. Why? Because it makes you happy. So the number one driving force of human behavior people who want to come to work for you and with you is they want to be happy. And so what you need to do is find out what makes people happy. And they're happy when you can help them to do things faster, better, cheaper, easier, more consistently, more reliably than any other way that they're doing it. So your job is to help people to be happy. All successful businesses make people happy. That's all. And if your customer says, I'm unhappy about this or that, the very first thing you do is you change it immediately, take it back, give them their money back, is you have only one goal in life, is to make people happy. The more people you make happy, the more they'll bring their friends, and you make them happy, and they'll bring their friends, and they'll be, and then they'll tell other people, and pretty soon they'll have stories about you in the, in the newspapers, and magazines, and television, and so on. So your job is you're in the happiness business, and you know, the, the, there's a an online site called, um, uh, my mind just went blank on me there. Um, it's Zappos. Zappos. And Zappos is formed by a man named Tony Shea. And Tony Shea said, what is it that people want and need? And one of the things they want and need is shoes. So what he did is he set up a small online business to sell shoes. And he just, he went to shoe manufacturers and he said, can I sell your shoes for you? And uh, they said, sure. So they worked out a wholesale retail deal and then they started advertising and they began to give people incredible customer services, a thousand different uh, shoes. If you've never shopped from Zappos before, you've got to do it now. Your next pair of shoes 
is Zappo, Z Z A P P O apostrophe S. Pretty soon you have hundreds of people and working for them, warehouses and shipping and everything else. But Zappos is amazing because you call up Zappos and they treat you like you were the king that just phoned. You're the you're you're one of the most important people uh, in the world that just phoned them and they treat you and takes such great care of you. And then he wrote a book, um, and, and and the book was called I forget the name of the book, but basically something like Zappos. And he said we he said we're not in the shoe business. We're in the happiness business. We just happen to sell shoes. And so therefore, what we do is we look for ways to make people happy. And if they call up, everybody in the company is instructed to make our customers so happy that they come back again and again, and they tell their friends who come back again and again. And pretty soon, his business is up to $1.2 billion. And Amazon bought him out completely and left him in charge. And his share of the $1.2 billion is about $500 million. And he just simply says, we're, we're in the happiness business. And it's a really wonderful way to look at business. Yes, you are. You're in the happiness business. Because if people follow your advice and invest with you and so on, they're going to be happy. Nobody is going to buy or rent anything that makes them unhappy. <laughs> that would be like punching yourself in the face and bragging about how accurate you are. I mean, no. All people want is to be happy. And they want to be happier. And your job is to make them happier. How do you make them happier? Well, you treat them well and you talk to them well and you serve them faster and you resolve their complaints and so on until they tell everybody else that's the only place to go. Why do people go to Starbucks over and over again? It's because all things considered, the Starbucks experience is one of the best coffee experiences in uh, history. And you can do the same thing. So anyway, my, my point is, um, that you have the ability to make people happy. And if you make them happy, they'll come back and, and buy from you and invest through you and, and follow your advice and, and, and everything else. So what is another commandment? Um, that was my commandment of taking responsibility. By the way, I studied psychology and I studied this subject for about 4,000 hours uh, over the course of years. And what I discovered was that the primary aim of human life, as I was starting to say, is to be happy. And what is it that causes people to be unhappy? And the answer is, they blame other people for their problems. They're angry, and they lash out, and they blame other people. If you stop, then the only thing left is happiness. If you can only be unhappy if you're blaming other people for some for some reason, you stop blaming. And the way that you stop blaming is you say those magic words, I am responsible. I'm responsible. Nobody else, me. I am where I am and what I am because of myself. And I have taught this to millions of people and people write back to me and they said their life was transformed by that idea that I am responsible and I don't blame anybody for anything because I'm responsible. Don't blame my kids. You know what the number one reason for unhappiness as an adult is destructive criticism when you're a child from your parents. Parents who criticize, destructively criticize their children, tell them how bad they are in various areas, kick out the chair underneath them emotionally. And for the rest of their lives, they feel bad about themselves. So I have four wonderful children, as I've said, my children have never been criticized because I know that if you criticize a child, it guts them like a fish on the dock. It takes away their pride and their self-esteem and their joy in life. So we have all kinds of arguments and disagreements and everything else, but, but we love each other and we debate and go back and forth and so on. But nobody in my family ever criticizes anyone because destructive criticism is the great killer of human personality, just a quick aside. And uh, why? We just encourage everybody to accept responsibility. I am responsible. You're responsible. We're responsible. Now, let's get on with it. Now, commandment number eight. Commandment number eight is everything counts. Everything counts. Everything that you do in life has an effect of some kind. Everything 
makes things better or makes things worse. Everything improves things or makes things um, lesser. So therefore, is remember, everything counts. Everything that you do is either helping you and moving you towards your goals and your success and your happiness, or it's moving you away. Nothing is neutral. Everything counts. So whenever somebody says, oh, it doesn't matter. And when people have a chance to do something and they have a chance to do it really well or average, they say, oh, it's okay. It doesn't matter. It doesn't make any difference. Nobody will notice. There's the mark of a person who has no future, has no success in life. Nobody will notice, nobody matters, nobody cares. Yes, everything matters. Everything that you do adds up and it adds up and it adds up. So make sure that everything that you do, you look, you go to a, a, a restaurant. I was just reading about one of the top restaurants and they talk and they show what they do in the kitchen and how to prepare the dishes how many different little things are done to prepare a single dish before it's taken out and served at the table. And they charge a lot and people eagerly pay them a lot because the quality of what they do is so amazing. Now, lots of other companies serve the same food, but no one takes the same amount of attention to prepare this dish and to make it so excellent in every way. And that's your job. Your job is to do really good work. Do really good work and then do it a little bit more. Uh, Earl Nightingale uh, used to say that you do a little bit more for the lavishing sake. He said, it's the lavishing sake. It's the little extra that you put in that makes all the difference. And who controls the quality of the work that you do? And fortunately, it's all up to you. It's completely under your own control. So commandment number nine, and by the way, you could write books and articles and create university courses on every one of these commandments. Um, commandment number nine is to consider the consequences. Now in life, everything that you do has a consequence, pro or con, positive or negative. It adds up or it takes away. Everything has consequences. So I always think in terms of what would be the consequences of doing this or not doing it? What would be the consequences if we uh, made this extra effort or didn't bother to make this extra effort? And the most successful people in our world are people who are always thinking, what would be the likely consequences of doing or not doing something extra? And it's that little extra, as Earl said, for the lavishing sake, that little extra that nobody expects that you put into your work that makes all the difference. It causes people to talk about you. It causes people to come back. You know, in, in business, I have huge programs on marketing. And in marketing, you have sort of three parts of marketing. And part number one of marketing is to get people to buy from you for the first time. That's the hardest of all sale. Actually, it's not. But it's a very, very difficult sale is to get people to buy from you because people are skeptical, because people have been burnt, if you like so many times and to get them to buy. The second part of the marketing process is to get them to buy again. And actually the second sale is the most important sale because you can get them to buy the first time with you know, offers and bonuses and discounts and, and all kinds of things to get them to buy the first time. But when they buy the second time, it's the way they put a stamp of approval on you and tell you that the, Everything you said you would do the first time you did is you really made me happy. You said you'd make me happy. I went to your restaurant and I brought my family and you said, if you come here, you're really going to enjoy the food and you were right. It was really great. I'm going to come back. So the second sale is the stamp of approval. You did what you said you would do. You made me happy. And that's really important because that's the key to success in business. The third part of marketing, we call this the golden triangle, is you tell your friends to come and buy from you as well. And your, friend, your customers are so happy, they tell other people to buy. Do you know that 85% of all sales come from referrals? If somebody tells somebody else that they should buy because they were happy with the transaction. So you always be thinking, how can I make my customers happy? Er, 
happier than my competitors. If you, you do that, I always think, how can we make them happier? Because it's that little er, it's that little bit on the edge that causes people to be so happy that they tell other people to buy from you. And it's only when they tell other people to buy from you that your business grows and grows and grows. No business can grow unless their existing customers are busy telling other people to come and buy from you. So those are the big three. And so uh, everything that you do with your customers has a consequence. It causes people to be happier so that they tell other people who then buy from you again and again and again. So always be thinking, what would be the consequences of doing or not doing this? And there's always a consequence. Whenever anybody says, oh, it doesn't matter or nobody will notice, don't listen to them. The most successful people are very, very sensitive to every detail of what they're doing. And finally, and by the way, I could write a book on every one of these. I just thought of that now. Is uh, commandment number 10 is uh, the quality of your life will be determined by your personal productivity. I am now the best selling author on personal productivity and time management in the world in 51 languages because I came across this some years ago and I realized everybody is successful to the degree to which they produce a high quality and quantity of goods and services. And so I began to study time management and it changed my life and it changed the life of other people as well. I have now sold millions of copies of my books and articles and audio programs in, in uh, countries all over the world. So therefore is uh, the quality of your life will be determined by your personal productivity. So what are the thing, one of the skills that you need to learn, you can drive a car, you can make a cup of coffee, you've got to learn to be highly productive. You've got to learn to manage your time and manage your time. Okay, I see this up, we need to wrap up soon, but I, I'm wrapping up, I'm right on time. I am one minute out. So those who, yeah, you're right, <laughs> I'm on time, I'm always on time. I've done this before, by the way, I did this once before, so. That's, that's my final commandment, um, is that uh, the quality of your life will be determined by the quality of your time management. And in every area that we've talked about today, you can always get better. You can always get better, never coast. There's, uh, there's only one direction in which you can coast in life. There's only one direction in which you can coast and you don't wanna do that. So let me just end up with this last point is we're living at the best, very best time in all of human history. There are more opportunities for you to be successful and happy and to make other people successful and happy today than have ever existed in human history, except for next year and the year after and the year after. So the possibilities for you are virtually unlimited. And I hope that you will take the advice of Andy and the others and take some of these ideas and incorporate them into your life, like folding them into a deck of cards and create the wonderful life that's possible for you. Thank you very much, Andy and Tia. And uh, thank you very much for an opportunity to talk to you. That's my friend, Brian Tracy. Thank you. Thank you so much. It's such a happy, it's such a joy to be with you. Thank you. I love you, man. I'm yeah. so proud of what you've done, how many lives you've changed. You made such a difference in my family's life, my children's life, my wife. We love your books. We love you. I was just sitting here thinking, I need to fill my jet up with people and come see you in person. Just sit down, buy you a cup of coffee. Would a couple of y'all like to do that sometime? Can we try to set that up? Come see you on the West Coast. <laughs> It'd be a great pleasure. Thank you, Andy. Thank you. I hope you, I hope we've had a good time today. The 10 commandments, baby. We're going to do them all. Love yeah. you. <laughs> Thank right. you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. <laughs>